All right. Thanking the Lord for so much coming back. Hope everybody's still doing well and may God bless you. I want to title this video, I Gotta Stand On What's Right. I Gotta Stand On What's Right. And I keep it too real for most of these, you know, church folks. But I love everybody. You know, a lot of people can't deal with the topics that I talk about. Nor do they agree with them, and that's fine with me. I don't expect a lot of people to agree. I had a comment earlier saying that I don't like a lot of your videos because you are talking about the church in a bad way. And you know what? <laughs> I laugh at that comment. I'm talking about the church in a bad way in your opinion because I'm talking about, when you say church, I'm talking about everybody, the believers. If you notice in my videos, I'm not calling the building. I tell people that all the time. When I say church, this body of Christ, I'm talking about believers all over. I don't care who you are, what color you are. If you are believing, you believe in God and doing God's will, you believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection, I'm talking to you. And most folks can't handle what I talk about because a lot of preachers won't talk about what I talk about. You know why? Because if they was to stand on half of the stuff I talk about, they would lose their membership. People will walk away because there's a lot of people sitting in the house of God, comfortable in their sin, because some of these churches done made the house of God a, com a comfortable place for sin. Now, you notice in my old video I said, I can't pray for you today. Get somebody else to pray for you. And a lot of people ain't going to catch that video. But to those who are keeping it real and understand me, then you know what I'm talking about in that video. Because I'm going to say something all the way real right here. Now, so many people going around and talking about folks in the world and what they're doing. The smoking, the drinking, the party, and the sleeping around, you know, whatever, so on, so on. And I did a video a while back called The World Look Just Like the Church. Because most church folks spend time pointing fingers, but they never point fingers at themselves. Now let's just look at some of these things that so many people try to make themselves look better than somebody else. Well, you got homosexuality all in the world, correct? It's all over. You got gay churches up now. Gay recreation centers, gay bars, gay clubs, so on, so on. Well, you got homosexuality out in the church. Some in the pulpit, some in the congregation, and most of them on the music staff in the music industry. Let me say music ministry, excuse me. And when you start looking at the world in the church, they look just alike. This is why I say, when you ask some people to pray for you, half of these church folks can't pray for you because they ain't praying for themselves, nor believing in the word of God, nor living it. They got more sins than you do look like, and everybody want to run to the preacher. I'm going to give you something else off top. The preacher probably got more problems than you do. He trying to figure out how to get through his stuff. Or she trying to figure out how they're going to make it through what they're going through because a lot of preachers... Some of them talk about faith, but they don't even stand on it. And you talk about people in the world that's getting drunk all the time. And you got deacons that are out drink you harder than anybody. Out cuss you harder than anybody. You got preachers that will cuss you completely out. Drink, will drink you under the table. Will sleep around harder than you. My point is, ain't nobody better than nobody. Yeah, it's supposed to be looking Christ-like, but it don't look Christ-like nowadays. Most people calling themselves Christians don't even know why. And this is the, the thing that's so confusing and causing all the confusion with this religion and tradition. Well, why do you go to church? What are you getting out of church? Who are you helping in the church? What are you doing outside of church? Are you just comfortable with just sitting in the church? Sunday after Sunday, week after week, year after year. Still in the same spot. See, it should be about kingdom building. Like Brother Minnie Man says, 
kingdom building and moving forward. Like I said in that old video, Jesus spent more times with the sinners than anybody. Church folks can't do that. Too busy judging. And, and, and trying to make themselves look better than somebody else. My point is, man, people that call themselves Christians, and I hope some of the unbelievers are looking at this video. Shout out to y'all also. There's a lot of people call themselves Christians, and they got the same sins like people in the world. I talked about this when I was uh, in my production video, talking about m music production, when I was laying all those track uh, rap tracks for the rappers. I have been on both sides with the rappers and the gospel artists, and I tell people, they the same. One of them just hiding behind Christianity, but they act and do the same thing. When you look at the lifestyle of some of these preachers, they are living just like the rappers that they talk about. And it don't make sense. But that's why the Bible say, beware of the false prophets. If you got a preacher that ain't standing on the word of God, and you sitting up under that preacher, I don't understand how people keep going to the same old church year after year after year, and the preacher ain't preaching about nothing. You sitting in there looking stupid and clapping and saying amen anyway. Everybody got problems. Question is, are you letting the Lord, are you following God? Are you still doing what you want to do? And then I hear people all the time, oh, look at that hoe right there. She always horned around. And the ones in the church, some of these ones in the church was the biggest hoes there was. Some of these hoes done been turned into a first lady. Yes, I'm going to keep it all the way real. And I don't care who get mad at the truth. So I stand on what most people won't talk about. Most preachers used to be a pimp. Male hoes, dope dealers. You all, We all was something. Some of us still something. And you can't keep walking around and talking about you delivered and you doing the same thing. Oh, I'm saved and delivered, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. No, you ain't. This is why you hear me talk about repent so much. Repentance. How you got to fall on the knees. Repentance is something that needs to go on every day, people. Because you don't know what you're going to do that next day when you wake up. You don't know what you're going to do when somebody make you mad. Whether you in the church or not. I don't know why folks keep trying to make themselves look all high and mighty. You are not all that. That's why Jesus said too, call no man good but the Father. You ain't good as you think you are. I'm not good as I think I am. We all got to be working on something. Now my problem might not be your problem. Back to what I was saying in the church. You got homosexuality all over the church. You got it all over the world. I don't even talk about Hollywood. I don't know if the church look like God business or Hollywood right now. A lot of folks are selling their soul to the devil behind that love of money, which is the root of all evil, like Paul was talking about. And when you get to the point where your church is based on just money, I don't want to be in that church. You more concerned about what's in my pocket than my soul? Something ain't right with that. So this is why I speak the truth. I told y'all in another video, I don't fit in with people. Because I'm going to stand on what God says, not what some old stupid man-made traditions say, and not some religion that ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. It's a lot of lost people out here. And the sad thing is they see more of the false stuff going on, so they figure, hey, I might as well keep doing what I'm doing. I ain't going up in that church. They don't even allow a sinner to come in there. These deacons in these churches, a lot of them are messed up. These preachers are messed up. These musicians, these praise team leaders, these choir members, they are messed up, toe up from the flow up. And some of them try to think they are better than you. This is why I spend most time on the block. When I'm going out, I talk to people, man. I don't condemn them. And I say, brother, I can relate. I ain't here to condemn you. I'm here to tell you about this Savior named Jesus. 
who can turn your whole life around if you let him. I tell them, you done tried your way for so long, why not try another way? Because when you do the same thing, you get the same results. That's how I talk to people on these streets. Brother, you can change. God got something for you. I don't walk up to them with my Bible in my hand and, and, and start prophesizing and laying hands on them. I don't even take this when I go on the block or wherever I'm at. You know why? Because it's up here and it's in here. It's in my heart. God said, I put the word in your heart. It's in my heart. I don't have to quote scriptures. And I don't have to walk around saying I'm saved. When you are a Christian, it shows in your spiritual behavior. Not about how many tongues you can speak in. Not how good you can shout. Not how good you can outpray somebody. It ain't, all, it ain't about all of that, people. I wish folks would get out of that. And start really focusing on following Christ. You can speak your tongues right on in the hell. You can play your piano right on in the hell. You can preach your way right on in the hell. I know I just made somebody mad with that. But I'm trying my best to tell the truth. JT, are you a perfect man? Who are you to speak of? But no, I'm not perfect. Why do you hear me talk about repenting all the time? Why do you hear me talk about salvation? Why do you hear me speaking about these things that the preacher won't speak about? Some of these preachers got this mentality on, I, I got to stay popular. I ain't going to preach on homosexuality. I ain't going to preach on the sins because all the people in my church will walk out on me. You stupid. And you need help. And I mean that stupid in a good way. You are trying to please people. And you trying to take care of your own self. Ain't no way I could be no pastor of no church and put anything in position. Now, do you know how God going to hold me accountable for that? See, when it comes to stuff like this leadership, I don't think people really understand the importance of being a good leader. You got people up under you. You got children watching you. How in the hell is a homosexual going to be over the kids? The kids going to grow up like I tell y'all the while back in my old video when I used to, excuse my voice, uh, when I was teaching these youth youngsters how to play the piano and the drums, and that the one on the piano, he couldn't have been no more than six years old, and he came up to me and said, is it okay for a man to be with another man? Because my uncle said it's okay. He sleeps with a man. And I had to look that little child in his eye, man, and hurt in my heart. I said, no, it's not okay. I said, a man's supposed to be with a woman. I said, a man's supposed to have a wife. This is what's going on in the church, people. We allowed all this homosexuality to just take over and run the church. We allowing the deacons to tell the pastor what to do. We see more pastors falling and getting in trouble with sleeping with somebody. Some of them got the nerve to be sleeping with another man. We see musicians hoeing around with the praise team. This is stuff we see with our own eyes, and God is not pleased. I know I don't have no more friends after this video, but I don't care. The only friend I need is Christ. I don't care if I don't have not one friend in the world. See, sometimes you got to walk alone, people, but you ain't alone. But I don't, when I say that, I mean I thank God for everybody else also, the YouTube family, but I mean that by saying sometimes you, you just need to say, what a friend we have in Jesus. What greater love is there than a man would lay down his life for a friend? I don't think I could have done it. You would have put me on that cross, I would have came down swinging. Remember, Jesus didn't want to get on that cross. He wanted that cup taken away from him, but he said, Father, if it's in your will, see, I would have came off that cross and been snapping at some folks. They would have wound up killing me anyway. But oh, thank God for Jesus. I would have been trying to pull them nails out of my hand, take them thorns out of me. I would have just came down and tried to whoop everybody in sight that put me on the cross. That's why couldn't nobody else do it. You couldn't have done it. Thank God for Jesus. Be blessed.